Yo, hello everyone, welcome back to another Albanian dev tutorial. I haven't uploaded a video for 4 or 5 weeks but now I'm back and I'll be uploading content on this channel almost every day so stay tuned. Anyway, in this video we'll be creating 3 cool button hover effects with HTML and CSS. This is the first one. When we hover you can see two elements gets rotated for 45 degrees. These elements are pseudo elements and we'll see how we can use them to create this cool modern button. The second one is this fancy button. When we hover over it, two more layers underneath the button get shown. These layers are also pseudo elements. I also added a cool clicking effect to this button. So when we click it, it goes back to its default position. Alright, and the last button is this glass button which when we hover over it, it shows a cool glass reflection animation. Okay, today we'll learn how to create these three cool buttons so make sure to stick to the end so you can learn many cool CSS tricks. Also, you can find the source code for three buttons in the video description. Now, let's jump to the video. Alright, as you can see I already created an HTML file which only has a basic structure to it. And here I also have an empty CSS file. Let's first link the CSS file to HTML. And let's also add a new title to this document. As for the body content I'll just add a button and a click me text to it. Now I will open this HTML file using live server extension. So basically every time I make changes it refreshes the browser automatically. Let's divide the screen into these two parts so we can have a view of the browser every time we make changes. By the way you can download this live server extension by going to extensions and search for live server. It will probably be the first extension. This is the extension. That's all for the HTML. Now let's go to the CSS file. For the CSS I will use a font called Railway. We'll get it from Google Fonts. I already have an extension that allows me to import fonts from Google automatically. Just type Ctrl plus Shift plus P and it shows this command palette. Here search for Google Fonts and then search for Railway and just press Enter. To get this extension just go to Extensions and search for Google Fonts. It will probably be the first choice. And here it is. Next let's add some global stylings for all elements. We'll remove the default margin and padding for all elements. We'll add a box sizing to border box and change the font family to the font that we imported. You can see the font has changed to railway already without refreshing the browser. Next we'll use CSS grid to center the button and we'll add a dark background color. After that let's select the button and add some stylings to it. It will have a transparent background, a border of none and an outline of none. It will have a padding of 1.4 rem for the top and bottom, and 7 rem for left and right. A position of relative since the pseudo elements will have a position of absolute. A cursor of pointer so the user knows it's clickable. And lastly add a white color for the text. 
Next let's select the before and after pseudo elements together and add some common stylings. They will have a content of none, a position of absolute, a width and height of 100% and a white background color with an opacity of 0.5. They will have a top and left of 0 and this will center them to the text. They will also have an outline of 1 pixel solid and a background color a little bit lighter than the background. Let's also add pointer events to none so if there's content behind the pseudo elements we can click it. And let's also add a transition of 500 milliseconds to all properties. So, when we hover over the button we want the before pseudo element to rotate 45 degrees and change the background to transparent. The same for the after element but we want it to rotate to minus 45 degrees. And that's it for the first button. Now when we hover we can see this cool effect that we saw at the beginning of the video. Now I'll remove some of the stylings and we'll jump over to the second button. But before that if you're enjoying the tutorial please hit that thumbs up and subscribe button so I know that you're really enjoying it. If not then comment down below your suggestions on how can I improve my new videos. Now let's go to the second button. Alright, for the second button I changed the text to fancy button. For the CSS I removed all the styling we had for the button and changed the background color to a very light grey. Now let's style the button. It will have this red background color and a white text color. An outline and border of none. A font size of 1 rem. A padding of 1.4 rem for top and bottom and a 7 rem for left and right. A position of relative and a cursor of pointer. Let's also style the button color. Let's add a text transform to uppercase. A letter spacing to 0.2 rem and a font weight of 700. Let's also add a border radius of 100 view per width so its corners become round. And lastly add a transition to the transform property. So here's how the button looks right now. Let's select the pseudo elements and add some common stylings like before. A Z index of minus 1 so the pseudo elements go behind the body. A border radius of 100 view per width so the pseudo elements corners become round. And a transition of 200 milliseconds to the transform property. Each pseudo element will have a background color of red but with different opacity. So, when we hover over the button, it will be transformed minus 16 pixel for the X and minus 16 pixel for the Y. Let's hover over it. Next, 
We want the before pseudo element to be transformed 8 pixel for the X and 8 pixel for the Y. Let's try it. And for the after pseudo element, as you may have guessed we'll transform to 16 pixel for the X and 16 pixel for the Y. Let's give it a shot. Boom. And we're done with the hover effect. Now let's add a clicking effect to it. We'll do that by using the active pseudo class. Let's select the button active, before element active and after element active altogether. When we click the button, all these will get transformed to zero. Just like this. But let's also reduce the transition when we click to 70 milliseconds. And this will give us a better clicking effect. Now it is perfect. So that's how we can create the second button. Next let's jump to the third and last button. For the third button I changed the text to glass button. For the CSS I also switched back to this dark background color. Now let's style this button. For background, we'll add a background image to it. This linear gradient will have a 45 degree angle. It will be transparent at 0%. It will have a white color with a 0.5 opacity at 51%. And it will be transparent again for 100%. Let's also add a transparent background color. Remove the dot after the second transparent. It will have a border and an outline of none. A padding of 1.4 rem for top and bottom and a 4 rem for left and right. A font size of 1 rem. A cursor of pointer. A letter spacing of 0.2 rem. A font weight of 700 in a white color. I forgot to add a background size of 300% here. Next when we hover over this button the only thing we want to change is the background position to right top. Alright, it works but let's also add a transition to make it smoother. And, boom, look at this wonderful hover effect. So I guess this is it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial please take your time to click the like and subscribe button to support me and check out the card at the end of the video since it might be some useful video for you. Bye and see you next time.